Um, let's talk about some business friendly ideas that, mm. that we can use to spur the economy. Yeah, um, another thing that I focus on is actually restructuring our whole tax system is now's the time. And, and to sit down and have a discussion, an economic discussion, a, a business friendly discussion with, with people from both parties, but how do we bring those jobs back to, back to Minnesota and keep them here in Minnesota? We do have a good business climate. We have people who work very, very hard. We have a high marginal product because we're very well educated and we don't have an ocean or mountains to run to. We have a cabin culture where we work hard all week and Friday night, we load up the kids and we pound the pavement up to the cabin. We, we party it up on the lake and, and have our fun. And Sunday night, we throw them back in the vehicle and pound the pavement back down and get up and go to work on Monday morning. And companies love that about us. Now, how can we work to bring more companies here? Because they want to be here. They want to be in Minnesota. We know that. So um, they, they started here. Look how many Fortune 500 companies started here or still have their headquarters here. It's too bad some of their... Uh, some different parts of their companies are moving away now. Mm -hmm. So how do we attract businesses? Um, we, we probably want to look at our tax structure. We want to make sure to have a, a, a great uh, educational system where, those, where that high marginal productivity comes from. And right? you're a teacher. You yes. understand oh. how important it is yes. to have great schools. Yes, and I'm a public school teacher, but I'm a public school employee that understands that without the private sector, I don't have a job. I don't have a paycheck. See, because the taxes are taken from that private sector and transferred into public goods, whether it be a road, a bridge, or grouse habitat, or, or a school. So, and, uh, yeah, and I don't know if you want to get into education, but, but I think I after, say no time like, after, after, why not? After 15 years of being in a public classroom, what have I seen for improvements? And again, what you could, or your audience could go and see what, how much money that we've spent on education and where it's come from in the last 15 years. And, and that's fine, but in, in 15 years, the, ad, the additions to my classroom have been a, a very nice projector and, and a smart board oh, and a the laptop. Oh, smart boards are and a big laptop. now. Yeah, and a laptop, which is great, and, I, and, I, and I, I do enjoy working with them, but that's 15 years. I still have 33 kids in a class. I still have, you know, 29 to 33 kids in a class, and I noticed that they just moved. I went into my class to, to check some things out and grab some books, and, and uh, I noticed that they moved five more desk, desk, desks in for this year. So what does that mean? More you know, kids. That, that means that I'll have 35, 38 kids in a class. So where has it gotten us? You know, um, again, talk to the people. And, and one thing that I've been doing is dis I just had a discussion, sat down with a girl who um, was in uh, Teach for America, one of my former students who now teaches down in Mississippi. And uh, just to learn more about that that program because there was some controversy in the in the legislature 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 this last year about Teach for America and should those teachers come into Minnesota and help out, especially in our schools that that need help, where the where the kids have an incredible incredible amount of energy, although it might be misdirected right now. How can we bring in some some college kids? She was in forensic science actually, and then was attracted to Teach for America. So here's a girl who who was possibly pre med, you know, I, I believe if I know my my science is right. And, and instead of uh, going on to, to further her studies right away, she decided to pay down some of her debt and get in, get in, give back to the community by teaching through Teach for America. So, and she loves it. And, uh, and she's, she was telling me about it, their test scores and, and how the kids have improved. And so to, to bring those high energy college kids in who are very intellectual. And she also told me about the process that they go through to be placed in the classroom because it sure does, you know, and I'm sorry, the, the the organization that I'm mandated by law to, to belong to, Education Minnesota, loves to say how these people don't receive any training and how can you bring them. But actually, it's, it was, they go through two telephone interviews and then an in-person in -person interview. And, uh, and, and, then there's, and then they have to go and spend some in-class time and they do a six-week uh, crash course on, on classroom management and different learning styles. And it sounded like a wonderful plan and, and a way to maybe close our achievement gap. Mm -hmm. So it sure does seem like it, you know, everything else that we've tried really hasn't worked. So Minnesota why not ranks this? number one or two uh, for, right behind Washington, D.C. for our achievement gap. Mm -hmm. That's an embarrassment yes. for the it, state it of Minnesota. Is. It is when we score so high on all. I know. It, well, compared to the country. Yeah. Now, what we have to understand is, is we really need to start publishing some of the numbers compared to the rest of the world. Exactly. I mean, and, and some, of the, some, of the st some of the statistics that I knew, do know, like this last year, China graduated 6.3 million college graduates. Those, wow. aren't, those, aren't, those are not poor farmers moving to the urban areas to, uh, to, to uh, manufacture at 65 cents an hour. 
These are people with college degrees who are now going to seek, going to seek jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a very tough grading scale. I'm known for, you know, you have to get a 95% to have an A. You have to still they have don't to, all get A's? They, they don't all get A's. You, know, and you have to have a 70% to pass in my class, and, and uh, the kids look at it and they think there must be a typo. But first of all, you usually win that debate because if anyone gripes about it, it's, and even a parent, it's, you just kind of look at them and say, so you want me to lower my standards for kids, you know? And I guess if they do, the next thing that I'd hit them with is the fact that, they're, that, they're, that their child is going to enter the most competitive workforce the world is, has ever known, the most competitive labor force the world has ever known. So, so it, we, we have to keep our standards up, and we, we have do. to compare ourselves to the rest of the world instead of comparing ourselves to the rest of the United States. And you, you commented about you were a teacher in an AB program? Ad, or, ad, uh, advanced, advanced placement, placement yes, not yes. international baccalaureate. No, no, advanced placement. So, Are you familiar with International yes, Baccalaureate? Yes, I am. Yes, I, I looked at International Baccalaureate and I also looked at uh, uh, college and the schools, and I opted for advanced placement. That's just me. I you know, love we're, advanced we're, placement. Yes, That's me, I too. Just, My kids were all advanced placement. I think yeah. it's just a phenomenal program. Yeah, so it's, it's uh, and people complain about, oh, it's just geared to a test, but, but that's the way that I am, and, and all teachers, all people are different. You know, we understand that, but I just would rather, I'm, a, I'm the old coach. You know, I coach football and wrestling and and everything else at, at Rosemont when, when you needed to subsidize your income when you were uh, with some coaching when you were younger. And, uh, and I'm an old coach who says, you know, show me the test. Show me the other team, give me their film, and I'll pick them apart. So that's, that's how I am with, with teaching, too. Wonderful. Yeah. All right, we've discussed uh, the economics, we've discussed jobs, we've mm -hmm. discussed taxes, we've discussed education. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are a couple other issues that you think are important to the people of Minnesota after you're elected? Yeah, I, well, there's so many, but I think, you know, I right, know, right now know. it's all the economy. And, and door knocking right now, you know, you knock on the door and you're like, you know, they answer. And, you know, I'm Kurt Bills. I'm an economics teacher at Rosemount High School. And that, that's right there. I get so many questions. Oh, you're an econ teacher. I, I stood at the door with a, with a housewife um, who must have been, you know, whether she was watching, you know, the, 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 the talk shows or the talk radio or whatever, she had three questions that she wanted answered. And she, for the last two years, she has wanted these questions answered. And I was able to answer. We talked about quantitative easing and money and printing and inflation. She was worried about that. And then what the TARP was. She wanted to know what the TARP Very was. Good. And, uh, and one more, and I can't remember it right now. But we had a nice conversation. So right now the econ teacher gets a lot of play. At, at the door, so we we, ju we just uh, we that answer makes questions. me so oh, encouraged. Oh, it's wonderful, isn't it? Uh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. that makes me so encouraged. So you've been doing a lot of door knocking parades. Yes, uh, door knocking, and then we had the Apple Valley Freedom Days parade, and now we have the Leprechaun Days parade in Rosemount this coming Saturday. I love so, the parades. I just yeah. love the parades. I it's love getting out and meeting people and shaking their hands and hearing what they have to say. And I'm, I'm one mm -hmm. of the few that loves to door knock too. Yeah. If you need help door knocking, well, call me. I am the best door knocker. <laughs> it's, it's so much fun. And it, being a teacher, it's, it's, you're, you're, you're gregarious by nature. You know, that's, that's why you're in the job you are. So, and, and the fact that I've taught, I think, just over 6,000 seniors now at Rosemount High School. So you know a lot of the families that are out there. And uh, it's been a humbling experience, you know, being out and not only, uh, you know, uh, receiving contributions from families that you had their kid, you know, how many years ago, and they put a little note in there. Um, but also the, the calls for yard signs and everything. I'll, I'll come into a cul-de-sac to, to put up a sign, and, and uh, somebody will come out of their house because I have a, our, our daycare van is a big white 40, you know, 350, and, and I've gotten the magnet signs. I have the magnet signs to put on the side so people know it's the Kurt Bills mobile. So I'll pull up in the cul-de-sac and somebody will come out and, Mr. Bills, you're not getting out of here that easy, you know, so bring two of those over here, you know, so it's, it's been a great time. Oh, so. they, I love that they have yes. such a wonderful reception for you. That yeah, is absolutely a, terrific. If somebody wanted to find more information, oh, it's very easy. How would yes, they, they go just about go on www.kurtbills, K-U-R-T, B I L L S dot com. So KurtBills.com. Oh, so. I think that's absolutely incredible. Okay, um, we're hearing a lot of talk about immigration now. Mm -hmm. Do you want to want to weigh in on immigration in you know, Minnesota? I, you know, yes, I, you know, in, in any state, the the, the Im Im immigration is. I'm, I'm pro immigration. I'm pro immigration. You got you have to be pro immigration. I think uh, most Einstein, of us are. Einstein was an immigrant. You know, right? That and, and that type of uh, hardworking immigrant. Uh, you know. 
I actually, a guy, a guy at my church, I sit down with him about once every two weeks, and he's from Brazil, and I absolutely love him. He, he works and he travels, and, and, he, and he's a hard worker, you know, and it's awesome. It's great to see him, and, he, and he's naturalized, or, you know, he became a citizen. So, but, so I'm pro-immigration, but, but the problem is when, when you don't uphold the rule of law, and, that, and that's what's really tough. You sure do want people to come here and, 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 and secure the blessings of our liberty. That's, mm -hmm. that's just a great thing, isn't it? I think somebody once said you can always judge a country by how many people are trying to get into it you know you always you know you always see on the reports from either whether it's from Africa or Central America or whatever the, the, the refugees are trying to flee there are no refugee refugees fleeing America everybody wants to come here because there is that opportunity here. because so we're the we, greatest country in the world that's right well we, we've offered the greatest principles in the world we, we had the you know again we had these framers who literally looked at the wealth of nations who read John Locke Thomas Hobbes all of these things came together at a perfect time and and all of these all of these individuals who were great leaders of, of that time in, in 1776 and 1787 brought these principles together thought an incredible amount about them. Just imagine not having uh, television or, or not having your cell phone. You know, having time to think. Now, granted, you're working very hard to subside and live and, and you know, for, for your clothing and your food and your shelter and everything, but you also have time to read, some time to read and time to think. And then when you actually see people, because it took so much effort to get over and see someone or, or whether, you, whether you met at Independence Hall or the pub, you know, you, you actually, the conversations that you had were very valuable. You know, this is all economics. It's the law of diminishing marginal utility, right? The, or the law of diminishing marginal returns, however you, whatever side of the conversation you're on. <laughs> but no, the immigration thing, I, I think we, we have to work towards a way of, of prom promoting legal immigration and, and promoting hard-working individuals coming to this country. But, but we have to, have to also understand the financial impact and ramifications of illegal immigration and, and what it does do to the state. And we have to look at, and I encourage people to look at those numbers as well. How much is it costing us? What is the burden? Again, we sure do want them to come and to be part of our country. That's wonderful. Walk in a parade with them, waving the American flag. Wouldn't that be great? But, but when you're trying to, when you're breaking the law, you're breaking the law. Uh, being, if, you, if a person was pro-illegal immigration, it'd be like being uh, pro-drunk driving, I, wouldn't it? I mean, you're, it's the law. It's the rule of law that, we're, that our society is based on. So I don't know if that and answers your question or not. Very good. And as much as I would like to spend another hour or two talking yes. economics and talking about the environment, talking mm -hmm. about the judicial system, talking about our vets, There's talking so about but we only have a half hour. Right, so understand. we're down to our last minute now. Yes. I want you to tell the viewers, why should they vote for you? Well, I think it's the perfect storm. I think it's the perfect storm for an econ teacher. Um, someone who n not only understands or had a course in that subject, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, but somebody who literally teaches it and is a part of it every day and then helps their wife to run a small business. So I think that, and, and also sits on a city council and, and, and has been an elected office. And so has I, I four think, children. And has four <laughs> children and, and can fix a doorknob. I, you know, <laughs> so, but I think, so it's, I think it's the perfect storm for, for Econ 101 and bringing some of those basic principles back. I also think that uh, people are very encouraged when, they, when I knock on the door and they open it up and, and we talk a little bit about the Econ uh, teacher, a little bit about what I do in the community. But then they always ask, you know, who are you, who are you running? Are you running Republican or Democrat? And, you know, the fact that I'm endorsed Republican and I'm a public school teacher, you know, just kind of throws a curveball at them. You know, that, you know I, get, I had one old guy say, oh, so you're the one. You know, so, that, so that was very interesting. You know, but there are, there, there are all different, there are different uh, ideologies uh, out there in every field. So you can't just think that there's only one, one conservative teacher out there. There's a lot of us. So, so I think it's the perfect storm for an econ teacher who's, uh, who's endorsed Republican. So. I think that's absolutely fabulous. Great. Thank, you, Thank so you so much, much for, for the, the interview. interview. <laughs> keep, me, keep me posted on what's yes. happening in your campaign, and I'd be proud wonderful. to go door knocking with you Oh, sometime. we'd have a great time.